This is the front of one of the books that I found pictures from, and I just wanted to read it to you guys. It says, Original photographs taken on the battlefields during the Civil War of the United States by Matthew B. Brady and Alexander Gardner, who operated under the authority of the War Department and the protection of the Secret Service. Rare reproductions from photographs selected from 7,000 original negatives taken under the most hazardous conditions in the midst of one of the most terrific conflicts and in the early days of photography. These negatives have been stored in vaults for more than 40 years. And then it says, edited by DC Robinson, 1907. This is from something else. So this is what they're saying that they were dealing with. This hand cart served as a portable dark room, also carried equipment in the mid 1850s in the very early days of photography. So apparently this is what they were using to like take pictures. This is from metmuseum.org. Just as the soldiers learned to fight this war in the field, so the photographers improvised their report. Because the battlefields were too chaotic and dangerous for the painstaking wet plate procedures to be carried out, photographers could depict only strategic site camps scenes, preparation for or retreat from action, and on rare occasions, the grisly aftermath of battle. The war photographers worked with wet plate negatives, which required delicate and laborious procedures even in the studio. Given the danger of their situation and the technical difficulty of their task, frontline photographers rarely, if ever, attempted action scenes. I don't know why this picture has that weird effect. It's like that painting effect that you put on pictures to make it look cartoon or something. It's weird because I've seen versions of these pictures that do not have that. So this says, first cameras ever used on the battlefield, found among Brady's negatives. Here's another picture from that book. Matthew Brady, first war photographer in America. He followed the armies during the Civil War and secured remarkable negatives. So this is Brady. I just want to know, okay, Brady, if this is the dude and if this is the situation that they had to do, like this is how they had to take pictures, this as well. This doesn't really say that this is what they used in the beginning of the book that this is from but it's like strategically placed there this is what they had to do okay i tried finding like what was going on with the first cameras and the answers i was getting was like all over the place reason why it's important is because like i don't know if this guy over here is just looking at binoculars or something or maybe he has a camera but like like either he's looking at binoculars taking a drink or taking a picture and this is from a book from 1907. It says, these photos were taken for the Civil War. Or this is while they're hanging out, reading a newspaper, Brady and his bunch. But then what's this dude doing? So I tried to figure out when the first handheld cameras were, because apparently we're lugging around this like wagon. And also like, I don't really know, like this guy's got this weird outline anyway, but I don't know, maybe that's just, <laughs> just the way it is. This is another version of that picture that's crystal clear. Doesn't have that effect on it, but it's cropped and you can't see the guy on the left see like even this mound of dirt though like something well I guess it, it is zoomed in it is zoomed in so it does look different what is going on here in in the clear version and this house is like going out like that over here it goes down like there's a lot of stuff that was kind of simplified I guess but it could just be the filter I tried to see if maybe what that guy was holding could have been like the Kodak. The first successful roll film camera, the Kodak, was launched publicly in the summer of 1888. Inventor George Eastman received a patent September 4th, 1888. This was 1861. I'm saying maybe he got like a little trial before or like you'd think that they would have said that. Like, you think they would have been like, oh, by the way, there was some dude in the back, like, using the Kodak, like, 20 years before it was invented or whatever. Maybe there's an explanation for it somewhere, but I don't see it acknowledged. And these photos have been stored in vaults for more than 40 years. I wonder if that means that it just took them 40 years to, like, make them. Okay, so I'm not going to show the photo because it's just weird. It's a picture of a gentleman lying down. He's like near some rocks and there's a gun propped up beside him. It says, the soldier's body was posed for the picture. Gardner and his associates moved the corpse from its original position 72 yards away and carefully arranged it to produce the greatest artistic and shock value. 
Gardner did not acknowledge tampering with historical truth. However, in the photographic sketchbook he kept during the war, he wrote that he had found in a lonely place the hiding place of a rebel sharpshooter and photographed the scene presented here. The sharpshooter had evidently been wounded in the head by a fragment of shell which had exploded over him and had laid down upon his blanket to await death. There was no means of judging how long he had lived after receiving his wound, but the disordered clothing showed that his sufferings must have been intense. It was not a common practice, although some authors have said it was. A scholar of Civil War photography, Bob Zeller, says this was the only known example in the conflict of a photographer moving a body. Gardner and other photographers, he points out, sometimes added props such as muskets, canteens, and etc. That is extremely disturbing. As if the point was just to make it a show to begin with. It gets really good. So here we go. I don't know what's going on there, but maybe it's all trees from being in that vault. But if you go up, maybe that's how trees are. Maybe trees are literally the see-through and you're supposed to see all this stuff through it. Cool. Nice innocent field. I just want to zoom in here. Get in there. I don't know if they had like invisible trees back then. Here's the top of a tree. And if I follow it, I don't know where it ends. Over here, here's a tree. I can see the bottom of this wall through this tree. And then if you zoom in, the tree stays transparent. And even over here, this tree, transparent. I can see right through it. All right, bunch of gentlemen hanging out as they do. Except why is this tree see-through again? Why is this tree see-through? And these gentlemen, good conversation they're having. This is the gold, I believe. This is what I came here for. So I figured out that a lot of these pictures have foreground, middle ground, background and a shadow man sometimes. If it's not this weird see-through stuff or painted, then it's probably razored as you see here with these razor marks that they sometimes leave. They get stuck in there. They've included this tree. Here's our foreground. This is our middle ground. This one's tricky. It includes back here. It includes this and I think it ends here. I think this is our middle ground. We've got some trees included. That's how they blend in. Our middle ground includes these gentlemen. This man who's transparent and crouching, I think. It, you can see the line right here. You can see the distinct change in texture all along the entire way. I've included a tree and they tend to sometimes not be able to get right up in there. So you'll notice bits of white really close to the things that they've razored or they'll just razor into it so that they don't get that white. But I'll point it out. But for example, you see this tree is just part of the foreground right here. And you see this white edge that's almost like the layer. That's like the photo. You can see it right there. And then you can see the razor blade go down. I don't know if that was a slip up. That's okay, we all make mistakes. And then they put this odd shadow man in the foreground. I don't know if he's supposed to distract me or scare me. Again, and our background right here. So this one's a really great example because it's a very obvious outline, very obvious change in the textures. You can see the trees. You just gotta follow what's behind them and you can see it. It's ridiculous. And the shadow man. I don't know why he's there. My goodness. Okay. We have a suspiciously transparent tree. I mean, okay, this branch is on this side. I guess it curves around. I'll believe that. Except I can see everything behind this tree everything. Anyway, that's not even the biggest deal here. I just wanted to look a little bit closer, see what's going on here. It seems that this man was put on top of this tree, but at some point this tree was put here. I don't know if it ends up inside the man. I don't know if the man is on the tree, but if you look very close to the back of the man, you can almost see a different background and then they just let it blend into the tree. But it's also interesting that this tree is transparent as well. And this one. Let's see. Ah, yes. My favorite. Transparent men. Oh my goodness. These two men are see-through over here. Having a chit-chat. Transparent legs. Transparent trees. Transparent. Um, this guy is transparent. I don't know why. These guys are just flopping around. And for some reason, if you follow these guys and you look very closely, it's almost like you can see continuations of the background behind them. We have good old uh, Abe and with his with our awesome filter. Notice how Abe is always in the same position. What a weird guy. Gotta love how he's just always looming. 
Secret Service guide directing Brady to scene of action, pointing toward the edge of the woods where General Reynolds was killed at Gettysburg. Brady carried his cameras onto this field. Okay. It's supposed to be a photograph, which to me, I feel like it's very obviously a painting with the white highlights. You can just paint those white highlights in, especially here with the ladder. It's like what all the other details are indistinguishable, but just enough to have the white highlights. And the men with their very prominent poses. This is a photo of a post office. This does seem like some of these people might not be on these steps. I just have a hunch. There's a lot of people there. Just dancing around, apparently. These dudes, their legs are drawn. I don't know what happened to their legs, but that's a drawing of legs. That's not- those aren't real hands. Those are really not real hands. Like, I've seen hands. I've also seen pants. Alright, I wonder what is going on here. Really. They're leaning on this. Dude, that guy must have the world's longest arm. Sorry. But I do see distinguished layer of this building. I can see. And it's very easy to just cut out these little slits. They love doing that. It makes it that much more believable. There's a brick wall at some point. I think it's supposed to be in front. But at some point the tree becomes on top of it. Maybe the brick wall ends right there. Love that. Here's some nice layering. I got a nice distinct foreground right here. These dudes. Right there. And then they probably paint right there, blend it in with paint. This one is absolutely fantastic because the tops of these gentlemen's hats are drawn. There, That is drawn. We have a foreground, which is whatever this situation is. And they just drew the men's hats for fun. Whatever. And then we have what's actually going on in the background. They're always bending their arm or holding their back. That's how you know, they're very wobbly. Again, these people right here were transparent. You can see the background through them. This one was really interesting. Look at the top of that building. This is cool. I don't know why this guy is like glowing. Maybe, oh, that was supposed to be a tent. All right, something's going on there. There's a tree that's transparent. Maybe this is a layer. Yeah, cause this is a different texture here. This line here is a different texture, top and bottom. And same here. What is this? Why do they put this random stick everywhere? For no reason. Okay, this is really interesting. I love this picture because it shows what it would look like with all the windows broken out. And I've referred to other pictures. When they've taken far away pictures of buildings, it looks like the windows are broken. And sometimes they draw over it, but sometimes every single window is too inconsistent to just be like regular windows like they're all broken whatever and this is literally what it would look like it makes sense why we see a lot of the vanilla skies because they're just whiting out the top of these buildings and whatever this is up here i know this is being passed as 1861 civil war however this looks kind of transparent right here this looks like it's i don't know something's something's going on there this dude's drawn he's got that nice little party thing i feel like the people probably aren't in this photo and they were just added after but this is really interesting and i'm thankful to have come across this photo because it's a great reference photo but the theory is that a lot of these photos were taken post reset basically saying that there was a war would have been a great reason for why there was so much damage and also a great excuse to further get rid of or just destroy signs of any kind of old world architecture even like shortly after this maybe they were just lazy and that's why a lot of the damage is just drawn over because they just took the pictures and then they're just writing the history on top of it it makes sense why a lot of the ground of seemingly regular photos of buildings are drawn over they're covering over damage or they were going to get rid of the building anyway so the there was never going to be a time to restore that building and why do that when they can just draw over the damage this does seem like different photos coming together also why are these top hat men drawn in why do they need to why are they there that's so weird they don't even fit in the photo i don't know how i seriously is that man actually at the top of the tree what, what is he there or like come on what there's a man at the top of the tree sure anything is possible these days so here we have a nice beautiful foreground for us just some dirt right there look perfect right you just see it they didn't even try there 
And then behind this mound of dirt, we have a train or something going on. Pretty cool. Oh, this is beautiful. So if you consider the theory that mountains are just old petrified buildings and for example the grand canyon if you look at it this photo is amazing because look at the top of this and whatever was going on here was very obviously some intricate stuff and it's just right there in the background of this photo which is also very obviously kind of cropped but here we have another layer see that line right there and there uh yes up here perfect following this this is very obviously cut in the background and then I, this tree is just on top of it and this man is just on the top apparently hanging out but these buildings look at that imagine what that could have been this guy i don't know what's going on here is that supposed to be his shadow is that supposed to be his shadow and then this this ghost there's literally a ghost here there's literally a ghost man right there. Look at this. Look at- he's just a ghost. I think he was part of a background. They tend to be really transparent if they're stuck in the background. Okay, this is a really good one. We've got this dude. This is an obvious layer here. You've got right- you can see it's just this 10,000 foot tall dude, okay? Just in comparison to these transparent people here, but we'll get to that. We've got this distinct difference in texture. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see. Yep, it goes there. Yep, we can follow this outline. Oh, look at that. It just perfect outline over here. Okay, cool. Now here, a bunch of transparent people. They're completely transparent. They're so transparent. This dude is transparent. You can see right through him. Uh, this guy is transparent completely. Which tells me that these people were part of a, a, gra a different ground than the train. Like the train was overlapped behind them or something. And I think what happens is they make the collage, but I feel like once they soak it, it would make sense why the you would be able to see the overlap. It just makes sense that it would become transparent when it's wet or something. This guy, I think his feet are drawn. Uh, yeah no legs literally no legs and not because of the war i'm going to assume that just looks like it wasn't supposed to be like that unless his leg is in the ground or something but that doesn't make sense and this guy's is this a ghost again and just another ghost man oh here too a, a literal ghost like an actual ghost is right there oh my god another one yeah there's the ghostly men in that corner I'm just gonna stay away from that. Down here is a perfect example of when they're using a razor blade to outline because you'll notice on the bottom of all of the feet, they've left the original, just a little bit of white outline. When they paste them, they've all got these weird outlines under their feet. This dude's foot is transparent and a half. I don't care. Is that even a real leg? All right, one thing at a time though. Headless dog? Nah, it's not a headless dog. Maybe his head is over there. His his legs? Is his leg on his arm? I guess. I guess we do that. This is- look at this difference in texture. So this is a fork- oh my goodness, look at that. Look at all those pastings. Okay, because this foreground is different completely. There's a distinct line. And even back there, you can follow it through them. And even behind them, you can follow their little collage. Okay, I've noticed something weird. Everyone's right hand is always cold. Wow, look at that. But Abe's fingers are always clenched. And I'll show you again where they really utilize his clenched fingers. Look at this. Is he on a pole? Like, I just want to know. Like, is he being stood up? Did he have to be le leaned on a pole? Is that what- Also, where is his feet? Where are his feet? Does he have feet? Or are they- Is the grass really tall? Is that what it is? Okay. This foreground of very tall grass, apparently. His clenched hand. Why does he look like a tense clam? Also, why- Like, I don't know if this is on a set. Oh yeah, because they had to stage the photos, right? So what, was this like an actual, like, come on. Anyway. Uh, clenched hand. A bunch of lovely gentlemen with cold right hands. No, there's just one. Now this is really confusing because I'm trying to figure out, is, so this is his? Whose shoulder? I guess like that, that freaked me out. You want to believe it's one shoulder but it's the other, whatever. Oh, but it covers his beard. His beard stops right there. So I'm going to guess it's his shoulder. 
just on his beard. Why did they leave this man in the back? This is cut out. This fence part here is just added on top of it to kind of spice it up, I guess. But like, this looks painted. This looks too flat. But the texture is completely different from up here and down here. There's a weird thing going on here. It's almost like these trees were actually completely bare and it's like they painted on them. And also the shadows are kind of just twigs. Yeah, this is like a com this is a collage game. Here we have uh, more ghost men, but this is also a nice collage game. Like look at that, there's such a distinct line right there. And it just includes the wheels, whatever. That pesky line. Look at these strange ghostly men. Some little tiny- oh, those are like toothpicks. Now, is this a train set? Are these shadows consistent? There has to be a break somewhere. If it isn't immediately after this big thing and then kind of following that, whatever that is. There was a crop done there. You can see the white beside it. So this might be part of this. If this is a picture of like a train set or something. Cause these are looking awful toothpicky. Look at that a little toothpick. Perfect size. These are all toothpicks, dude. There's just like so many toothpicks everywhere. I don't know. This all this stuff looks way too light. All this stuff looks like I could just blow on it and it would just fly away. And then it could be like pasted on top of like something of an actual background. But this background's kind of wonk. Whatever background is going on here, they even like vanilla skied it. Like it's cropped. There was a crop done. Whatever they're doing here. But then these are like drawn trees. And who knows what this is. Look at the shadows this way, this way, this way. But these shadows that way, that way. That would make sense if the light was coming from literally right there. Let's see, what other shadows do we have? That one's very obviously going that way. It's going that way. Same with that one. So either that's from a different picture, a different time of day, in that background, wouldn't be hard. And this light, like look at these shadows. This light source is giving me some weird vibes. Cause this is a really long shadow. So then it's low over there. Cause we got long shadows there. As if this didn't already look like a little miniature. And I say that because the front of it just looks like it. it this looks way too light. Is this train running? Is that steam? Is it running? And is it about to hit these people? Maybe it's idling. I like, I really don't know. I really have no idea. Oh, also, look at this. Let's see. Let's see. What's this uh, branch doing here or whatever? Because I don't know what's going on there. Let's see. Let's just follow it. That's cool. But it's looking real transparent right there. Oh, this whole thing is included in that. Look at that. Okay, I think this whole pile is its own layer. You can see it's this, it's literally its own layer. I don't know if it includes this. This tree was just added on top of it all for fun. They love putting trees in the foreground. It's so annoying. There's a dude right here. Why is he transparent? What's going on with your legs, sir? All right, anyway. And his head. Them and their collages. Look at that. It's like from far away, that seems so obviously like a little toy train. And then you're telling me that it's not about to run into these people this ghost man. We have a foreground of ghost people and shadow people because look at this. There's something supposed to be here. I don't know what ground it's on, but it goes right through this carriage and it goes right through the house. But also I see grass and I see a different like horizon here. Oh, you know what? I still so right there. That's the bottom of these houses that I'm seeing through. And then this is just a random weirdness. It's weird because this is like, there's carriages, whatever. Weird pasty stuff going on there. You can see they like overlapped something. This pasted stick. And this wonky stick, look how wonk that stick is. That's a wonky stick if I've ever seen one. Like, look at that. There's a clear cut right there. Whatever this is, this pole, it, it ends right there. It's weird. 
It makes no sense, but it's see-through. I can s literally see the he the roof right through it, up here at least. So then down there, this must have been painted. They must have gone ham with the painting right there. And then just like not cared right there. Oh my god, there's a person in that freaking door! A ghost person. Let's zoom out. Look at all these ghosts. Like, let's super zoom out. There's a, there's a wall here that goes down and like breaks and stuff. But you want to know what's weird? I am getting the same vibes from this break in these walls as one of the original pictures. Why is it giving me the same vibe as this? Let me just go back here for some reason. This break here, this here is giving me the same vibe. Let me see. This is a completely different picture. This is the one where there's like the tree is see-through and stuff because i spent so long looking at this picture following the lines of like how it goes down i just like recognized it when i looked at this picture over here so right here it's very faint you see how this one's right in front of it and then the one behind it it goes and it kind of swoops up so if you look you have this one that goes right you know this layer in front of it and then here very faintly it like swoops up who knows, maybe they're just reusing walls for layers. Maybe it's a stretch, maybe it isn't. Let's zoom out. I don't know where it goes from there, but you can see that there's this faint wall thing going on there. And that V right there is too consistent with that. Hold on, this is getting unreal. If you, cause look at this, this breaks down right there. That's about as long as the wall is. Here, if you follow it, it is roughly the same. Look at the light part of the wall here. This invisible wall. See how it's light here? Dark up here. It's light here. This is what's transparent. The darkness is what remains. So the light part gets so transparent all the time. So that's consistent. If you literally just look at the light see-through part here, which is obviously not meant to be see-through, and then the top dark part of this wall, it's literally consistent with the light part here and then the dark part of the wall there and then right beside it where it's dark here right beside it is where this tree is placed which this tree is literally transparent to begin with and then right beside that it's a light spot and right here is this light spot this is the same wall right here and then it opens like that down here and it opens like that the light part and then the dark light part and dark 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 <laughs> Where is this wall? Which one of these photos is real? Because this doesn't make sense that it's so transparent and what is going on here. And it feels like they put this fake, like, filter on the edge to make it look like an old photo. Like a fake burn. Like, straight up. Look at the texture of this water and look at the lines. Water doesn't do that. Airbrushing does that. But this just seems like a, a lot like one of those filters that you just slap on top. Especially considering I've found this wall in a different photo. And these trees are see-through. Are these straight ripples? Anyway, back to this photo. See-through pole that turns into the back of a house. Is this a contraption attached to the top of this? Or is it a distant puddle? But also, do we really care when this is going on? Yeah, look at this. This is see-through because I can see the entrance to it, to this thing behind it, through it, whatever that is. And also, okay, wait, this is ridiculous. This buggy is apparently in that half in this barn. Oh, I need to zoom out. What is going on here? It's coming out of that barn. Oh my god. Is that a horse in front of it? Is that literally a horse pulling it that way? I'm, nah. But it's in front while the other end of the buggy is supposed to be inside there like hold on maybe it was going in really fast holy oh my goodness look at that line right there we got a crisp line this is drawn the horse's legs are drawn it almost looks like things were taken out here haters will say it's fake i'm a hater and it's fake they love doing this they love cutting out big parts in fences to just show the back so they razored these like sections out for sure. Wonder what they did with them. 
I, this looks like 17 see-through things all on top of each other. My cat's hand. Sorry, do you do you want me to hold your head again, kitty? Is that why you're angry? Because I stopped? I'll put my hand back. Alright, anyway. If you see these trees and stuff, they go down right behind everything. I can see through everything. Oh, that could just be the steps. Unless... This is me. Whatever's going on, this is me. Okay. I think they're walking this way. But their horse is that way. Like, they're holding their horse. I can't tell if they're on this side or that side of the fence. The horse's head is on the other side of the fence, apparently. Or, not fence, this post. I think there was someone on here that they, like, had to edit off or something. Because what is this? I forgot to mention why I think it's so awesome that, um, his fingers are bent like that. And that he's just such a stiff man. And that's because it's perfect for holding scrolls and placing on top of books. It's a book, and that's how you naturally rest your hands on books. I think that this man, he looks very stiff, he looks very odd, and I think whenever he has facial hair, it looks like it was glued on. But you know what? Glue it on, stand with your stiff hands. Like, if his fingers were cold, he could have just done what this guy did, you know what I mean? Or this guy. Like, I feel like if I poked his shoulder, he would just start oscillating the other way yeah he's got the mighty grip the hands of book holding and scroll holding thank you mr president 